That Great Business Show, Ireland's best business podcast. Welcome to episode 139 of That Great Business Show, posting on the 12th of May, 2023. I am Conal O'Morine, Fuerte Coming up, business tips, insights, and opportunities on a podcast that is just long enough for your daily work, with thanks to Dundeal.ie. Coming up on this episode, we will explain how you can run your Irish business from anywhere in the world and help retain staff, thanks to digital. And we have a company that wants to bring your company to go greener. All coming up on this episode episode of That Great Business Show. All our tips and insights are brought to you thanks to Dundeal Motors, the only place to look for your new or previously loved car, van or truck. Dundeal.ie Dundeal Motors is home to Ireland's largest range of new and premium used cars. That's why you'll find cars from Audi and BMW dealerships on Dundeal. Are you looking for a seven-seater to accommodate your growing family? Maybe you're after a luxury saloon to make a statement. We have the car for you. You'll also find Ireland's largest range of electric cars to help you make the switch. Visit dundeal.ie today to start the search for your next car. De facto shaving oil. The world's best shaving oil. Made in Mayo. Sold worldwide. All that great business show advertisers are Team GBS approved. Back them. A recurring theme in staying in business or growing a business is to go niche. That goes for the printed word where the Irish Farmer's Journal continues to defy gravity affecting mainstream newspapers. Similarly, in the UK, gossip magazine Private Eye keeps growing its sales substantially. And then there's Go Wild magazines, an almost decade old niche Irish publisher that has just launched its latest title, The Irish Abroad Vancouver, celebrating the success of Irish entrepreneurs abroad. Go Wild's business model is most interesting and is being repeated by many other sectors such as accountancy and IT firms. COVID has decentralised the business, so boss Pobby Power, former Limerick leader sales manager, has to oversee a team based in Vancouver, Northern Ireland, London, Dublin and Spain. And your business could do that right the same. Bobby Power, welcome to That Great Business Show. Thank you, Gordon. Pleasure to be here. Tell us about decentralising as you or I have just described. OK, well, the decentralisation of Go Wild, I, I suppose it's, it's it started initially, uh, Colonel, when we first set up the company in that I couldn't afford to hire people, right? So basically, I had to hire in contractors. So we hired in people for editorial, people for design, and we kind of grew it. We went from one magazine back in 2014 to three magazines in 2016. And I noticed in that in that period that, you know, we were using the same team for editorials, for design, and it was all working on a basically, basically a project basis. So everybody did amazing work. Everybody did absolutely brilliant jobs. And everybody got extremely well paid. And, you know, everybody was very happy. I was happy. So it just meant that we came together, did the project. Project went on sale. Well, at the time it was, it was free, but the project had a a pause to the next one. And then we, we all came back together again and did the next one. And then it just happened. It was like, like bringing a soccer team together for a match. Well, that's fine and dandy, except the problems with time. You mentioned that you've got people in Vancouver, you've got people in Spain, etc. Trying to bring the soccer team together. Normally, they're all in the same stadium or wherever together, but not all over the world. True. Okay. Well, to to get get around that. Okay. Dave Curtin, who was our chief designer uh, from the very outset, because Dave used to work with me in the Limit Leader. He then moved to Vancouver. uh, We were in our second year when he moved to Vancouver. And Dave said, well, look, he was going to continue the to be the chief designer, which is great. So Dave is um, eight hours behind me. So that meant that anything that I needed to get done, I if, if a client said to me, look, Bob, I need to get this ad designed, I go, okay, look, we'll have a few first thing in the morning. I was sending that to Dave at just say four o'clock in the afternoon, right? So Dave is getting that at 8 a.m. his time. He was sending it back to me so that I was sending it back to the client at 9 a.m. the following morning. 
that's working rather nicely for you, all right. Yeah, that worked really well, yeah. It so did. you're lucky there. Now, what about trying to spread it any further out? Because we frequently have people on the show now who are in IT and they've got people in South Africa and they've got people in Australia. I had um, Fergal Lawler of Alpha Wireless on episode yeah. 138 and he's got people all over the world. And it's a constant issue or a problem. I did ask him whether he works 25 hours a day. He denied doing so, but I think he does. Maybe. Well, look, I use Dropbox um, a lot, Colonel, uh, in that Dropbox, we've, we've a streamlined system set up, which uh, it wasn't designed by anybody. It's designed by me to be as easy as possible for, uh, for everyone to take part in, right? So everybody has a, a share in the folder. Everybody can, you know, the, edit, the editors have a, a share of the editorial folder. The designers have a share of the design folder. So it all works quite well. So I kind of oversee all of the folders. So um, I have to make sure that we also use a system called Blink Plan, which is a magazine layout, which is a fantastic system. Uh, so you, everybody can see that. So that if if I make a change to a page, just say I put in a full page picture of Conal, Conal O'Moran, everybody will see that at the same time they'll get a notification that Bobby's changed page 14. And yeah? world, worldwide, you'll hear a groan. Yeah, but it works. You know, so look, it does, it works really well. Um, our system is extremely good. Um, everything is detailed. You know, when the designers do go in to start the design process, I don't actually have to speak directly with them unless there's some, some issue that I, that I want to get across in terms of page layout or something. But you know, they just kind of, they know at this point what they've got to do and they just do it. And the death of print seems to have been overstated because not alone have you grown your number of magazines and I, that you sent me through some physical ones and they really are nice. They Thank are you. very, very attractive, but you're also going to grow that staple as well. Just talk to me, this week you launched your Vancouver magazine. Why Vancouver? How did you come up with the idea? And who is okay. featured in it? Right. Well, the Vancouver magazine started with a trip to see my daughter Louise in Kelowna. And <clears throat> while I was there, I couldn't get over the um, the amount of Irish who I met who were all running very successful businesses in Kelowna. And, you know, it, I was only, only there for a week. And, you know, my it was I, I was blown away by the, the kindness and the, the spirit that they all had to you know, carve their own niche. I mean, my daughter you know, is self-employed, but she was well, she, she she rents a chair in a, in a salon. And she's doing really well as well. So when I came home, I kind of thought, you know, they've, they've all gone out there and they've carved their own niche in a world that like what well, millions of, well, hundreds of Irish have done for years. But to see it in action, I said, that's not been celebrated. So I waited three months and I saw a gap between what we were doing in the Go Wild. And I said, look, I spoke to the team. And I said, look, guys, I'm thinking of this idea to celebrate the success of Irish people abroad. So I connected with the Department of Foreign Affairs, first of all. Then I connected with the Vancouver Irish Chamber of Commerce and we had a few Zoom call meetings. And they then, I, I became a member of the chamber and I was able to get the list of members. And then I started contacting members to see who would like to take part. And then uh, five of them took part. I mean, one of them, all of their stories are absolutely amazing. They were, they're mind blowing stories in terms of how to build a business in Canada. But one of them, I suppose, in particular would be, uh, William Donnellan from Galway. He runs the IRL group in Canada, as well as running five Irish pubs. Now, he went there, uh, I believe, as a plasterer and saw a niche in the market over there to hire people to work on construction sites. And now he has this absolutely ginormous business going in Vancouver. So these people all agreed to be interviewed, talk about their journey in terms of how they got started, how they, you know, got accepted and got into the whole uh, Vancouver vibe and business. And my team produced it. And we then added a lot of Vancouver tourism into it as well to showcase Vancouver to an Irish audience. So we produced the magazine and the magazine is now on sale nationwide in Ireland. At just shy of six quid a copy, if I remember. Yes, right. and, and what is the business model? Are you like, where are you going to sell that? It's on sale in uh, Don's, Tesco, Eason's, Super Value Centre, Mace and Landis, stores nationwide. And is the hope on your part that people who know people in Vancouver buy it? Like, again, we're talking niche here. Not everybody knows people in Vancouver. No, it's very niche, but it does have, well, I suppose one of the attractions of it, Colonel, is that 
Uh, there's probably two thirds of it is Vancouver tourism. So anybody who has an interest in, you know, travel will see, you know, well, there's a lot of Vancouver information in there. So that might be an option for them to consider, you know, going going forward. But I have had a massive, I mean, the response to the the parents and the cousins. And we had one lovely story, which if if you don't mind, I'm, I'm just going to tell you. I got a phone call on Saturday morning from a lady to say, hi, where could I get five copies of Go of the Irish Broad magazine? in Cork and I said well it's not going to be in Cork until Monday afternoon it, you know it won't be available oh Shabab I said I'm going to a wedding in Vancouver on Tuesday and one of the guys the, the groom is actually in the magazine I said okay I said look I'm going to phone my distributor I'm going to get him to get five magazines down to you by Monday morning and you can bring them to the, to the wedding and tell Owen it's my wedding present right and on Monday morning at 8.05 8 she got her five magazines that's a nice story. Yeah. But five times six euro, even if you got the money, that's not going to keep uh, the, the bailiff from the door. No, but it, um, the model works in that, you know, I have I believe five euro 90 is plenty for a magazine. I have seen, you know, a lot of other magazines on the shelves that are 11 and 12 euro. And <clears throat> my pricing model Colonel, for all the magazines has been based on the fact that I think it's enough and we make a profit on the magazines. Well, that's the all-important, isn't it? And how yeah. often can you publish? Take Vancouver. I'll get on to the other locations in a second. How often can you go Vancouver? Well, the plan is to do Vancouver once and then do Toronto next and then do New York, then do Dubai, then do Sydney, then do Melbourne. Don't forget Savannah. That's on my list here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Savannah. <laughs> I've forgotten Savannah. Yeah. Savannah is uh, <clears throat> very important as well. And what's the basis on choosing those? Obviously, they're large, very, very large cities and or locations. And um, is it just that you say a lot of Irish there or have you got a, well, anything more scientific? Uh, um, well, my research, um, a very good friend of mine, uh, Ronnie Dabra in Limerick, when I told her about I was doing Vancouver, uh, she said that you just have to do Savannah. So then she put me in touch with the uh, tourist people in Savannah and I've had a conversation with them and it looks like they're very interested in, in taking it. So it's it's more about, you know, finding the tourism board who actually wants the product and then working with them to create the product. But strictly speaking, it is they're one offs. They're not going to be regular. No, they're, no, they're, they're one offs. I mean, it, it, it would be nice to get them into an, an annual stage where we, we do uh, each city uh, once a year. But if if I take on too much, my wife would probably shoot me. <laughs> Because I have, uh, I have eight other magazines going as well. So, Well, talk to me about those ones because they are and have been your mainstay. They have been more than bread and butter for you. Yeah, they certainly have. OK, well, when we started, uh, Fault Ireland announced in 2014 the creation of the Wild Atlantic Way. And at the time, I was working with Hopkins Communications in Cork. And uh, so I thought this is a really great idea for a magazine. So I decided to set up. Uh, Go Wild magazine, and we did the first one. I think the first one was 64 pages, and we we, we did lose money on it, but I thought the idea is, is there to make it work. And I suppose that was the start of remote selling in that I couldn't c cover the 2,500 kilometer trip, so I had to do it all by phone. So I became a, a, a fully phone salesperson, building, building relationships over the phone every single day. So we started with one magazine, then we went on to the, the Ancient East, then we did the food experience. And in 2018, we were in China and won a World Food Tourism Award with Gourmand for our food magazine. Then we followed that. Now, sorry, Colin, to explain, all of these were free in um, airports, Fortune Ireland tourist offices and hotels. Paid for by Tourism Ireland, was it? No, paid for by the advertisers. Okay. So then in 2019, we brought in Dublin. We brought in On the Lakes. And we brought in Northern Ireland in 2020 and then COVID hit. And when COVID hit, I kind of sat back and kind of said, well, OK, our model is a, is a free model. It's in, you know, places where uh, people have to touch the magazine. And I spoke to hotels and they didn't want the magazines there anymore because obviously, they, you know, the clients couldn't touch them with, with the, the whole COVID scare going on. So I sat back and I thought, OK, I need to rechange the model. So when we came out of COVID, I decided to make the magazines on sale. So I spoke to Menzies and I spoke to Newspread and I said, OK, we're going to put them out there. So we scrapped the free model and we went in, into the paid model. And it was the best business move I've ever made. That's interesting, isn't it? You'd almost think that is counterintuitive. Yeah, but, you know, it was a case of, well, we're either going to go the paid model or we're going to have to shut down because, you know, the, the, the free option wasn't there. And sometimes... 
And although I appreciate, you know, the, the places that stocked our magazine initially, seeing the sales in the shops now, you're kind of going, well, oh, I should have probably done, done this earlier. But look, you know, you live in there. <laughs> There's a term in stockbroking, you can never job backwards, which means oh. don't ever look back. You can only look forward. Uh, no, so look, you know, that was, that was part of our growth and it took us to where we are. And, you know, COVID uh, gave me a lot of time to think and restructure and what, look at what we're doing and make every single magazine better. So, you know, we've we've since launched, you know, because of COVID, we launched our Staycation Ireland because the word staycation, free COVID wasn't even known. I mean, it was a, like an obscure word, but now it's almost like a, a staple word in the Irish, in, in the um, language. So the staycation to, took off because everybody wanted a staycation immediately after COVID. So, so that gave us, you know, uh, an extra title. We then, in 2022, added the Irish Spirits magazine. I discovered in March 2022 that there was only the whiskey magazines. There was no whiskey and gin. So I decided, well, it sounds like a good idea to do gin and whiskey. So we did. And then we added a Go Wild Christmas magazine. And that proved to be a success. So we're blessed, Colonel, in that we've got a great team who, when I give them an idea, they can all kind of pull in together and we come up with some great concepts and some great editorials that people like. I was delighted to hear from you that you are being supported on the whiskey one by people that we had on the uh, podcast Keeper's Heart. It'll be yes, uh, right. Patrick yeah. O'Shaughnessy and uh, Brian Nation. And yeah. uh, so there you are, as you say, you're about to go further international Toronto, New York, Savannah, Chicago, Sydney, Melbourne, Dubai, according to my list. Yeah. If anybody listening would love their son, daughter, uncle, aunt, to be featured. Now, I'll say it again, the quality of these magazines, they're real coffee table magazines. They are not your throwaway. This would sit there rather nicely uh, for, a, for a period. How can people, I won't say apply, but how can people um, uh, send in their suggestions of great business people, particularly young great business people, to you? Very simply, Colonel, and I love... Uh I love people who who get in touch and they can do through my own personal um, email address is bobby at gowildmagazine.com. But, you know, we, we, we do have a, a rule and we've had it in every single Go Wild magazine since the start that we feature one entrepreneur in every magazine for free. But nobody will ever know because we don't highlight, we don't say, oh, it's, it's advertising or it's editorial. It's just there. But I ask my team to try and find what that one person who needs a leg up and then we give them the interview and hopefully that gives them the leg up. But other people have got to pay, do they? Uh, no, no, no. Not all of the editorials are paid for. No, they're not. Um, some of them will, may be part of a, an advertising campaign, but um, 90, 90, 92% of the editorials are all based on information that we want to give out for free. And on the New York one, I mean, you might have, and I'm only taking New York because it's a large city, you could have hundreds, maybe thousands but, of Irish businesses run by young Irish people who might want to be in the queue for you. Yes, that is, that is a possibility. And hopefully that actually comes to fruition. But, you know, for now, I took the chance on the um, Irish about Vancouver to produce it. Uh, you know, it obviously costs a lot of money to do so, but it's worth the risk because now I have a magazine that I can send to other regions, to other cities and say, well, look, this is what we did in Vancouver. And when you have, you know, as, as you said, Colonel, when you got the magazine in your hand, that created a whole different um, idea of what we're doing to you. It's certainly in terms of its pinch feel, is not the term? It's yeah, lovely. Pinchy, yeah, yeah. There you go. You see, I, I, all the, over the years, I've learned some things about the, <laughs> the publishing business. I, I have to ask you two final questions because I always have final, final questions. One is, you said you have become a telephone salesman, salesperson. Give yeah. us just one top tip about selling on the phone. Uh, the easiest one is to smile. Okay. I'm, and always, I'm and, hearing and always, you. Always remember that the person on the other end, you may be interrupting their day. So be kind, be nice, be uh, be genuine and be understanding. Because, you know, that would, that person could be could have just had, received the worst news in the world and you've just rang, you know, and you're looking to take money off them. So you have to give them something. You have to give them some part of you before you can even talk about money. So you, you've got to say hello. You've got to have a chat. You can't just say, hi, I want to sell. OK, that's all very well, except that you're phoning up and you say, hi, it's Bobby Power here. I want to give, I want to sell you some ads. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's 
it's about the relationship, Colonel. You know, I mean, I ring people like the, my clients have have become my friends over the years. You know, I know their kids' names, their where they go on holidays. So you have a chat, and then you talk about money. But you don't have to. You know, the worst thing anybody can do, and I see a lot of people doing it on LinkedIn, they try and sell immediately once the person connects with them. It's the worst thing you can do. Tell me the truth, Bobby. In terms of remembering people's names and kids' names and all the rest, do you keep a diary or do you keep one of those, some kind of a digital form on people? No, Colonel, I actually remember them. <laughs> I've, I've been doing this for 25 years and my brain is trained to remember. That's a, Listen, can I have a little bit of your brain? Because that's the bit that I miss. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember what people, what businesses they're in, and I'll know everything about the business. But come to the name, oh, that'll kill me. Come here to me. The final question that we ask all our guests is, who would Bobby Power hire in a heartbeat? Who would I hire in a heartbeat? Very good question. Somebody who can sell as, go sell as good as I do. Um, in terms of business, if I was to pick a, a business person that I think is is amazing, I think Richard Branson. I'm going to look. I, I can never hire him, but I love his ethos. I love the whole laid back ethos, and I love how he builds relationships. Um, I'm trying to think of who in Ireland anybody does, that you've ever worked with over the years. You say, "Good God, if they would only come back and work with me or whatever." Well, I learned I learned a huge amount from Fergal Deegan in the Limerick Leader. Uh, I learned a huge amount from working with Irene Hamilton. There was a lot of people that I, you know, competed with and people used to think that we were competing with radio and competing. We weren't. We were meeting up for coffee, but we were having a great crack. But everybody thought we were in competition. But I suppose I learned a little nugget from everybody. Does that make sense? Of course it makes sense, yeah. And as we frequently say on that great business show, so long as you're not eating somebody's lunch, they will help you. And I do understand the difference between a radio and a magazine, even though yeah, if it is all yeah. advertising. Bobby, when you are about to launch your next magazine, please do get in touch with us again. And we'll see. We might put out a call for whoever, whichever one you're going for. Is the first one going to be Toronto? Uh, it look, It's looking that way. I have a meeting on Monday. So hopefully that will uh, start the ball rolling there. Well, if, you tell, can, if it I, is I, Toronto, I, do tell us and we'll shout out to Toronto for you. Perfect. Well, look, Colonel, the good news is for you that you are now on the mailing list, right? <laughs> Another like mailing list. Copy of every magazine, right? Okay. Well, I look forward to that. They really are. It's well worth going out there, whoever's listening, and buy the magazine. It's less than six quid. And in particular, if you're related to any of the people being featured, it is a lovely way of celebrating them. It's also a lovely way of celebrating Irish people in business abroad, people that we just love to our bones. So, Bobby Power of Go Wild Magazines, thank you so much for joining us on That Great Business Show. Thank you, Gunnell. I appreciate it. Dundeal Motors is home to Ireland's largest range of new and premium used cars. That's why you'll find cars from Audi and BMW dealerships on Dundeal. Are you looking for a seven-seater to accommodate your growing family? Maybe you're after a luxury saloon to make a statement. We have the car for you. You'll also find Ireland's largest range of electric cars to help you make the switch. Visit dundeal.ie today to start the search for your next car. Make one small switch. Switching from shaving foam to all-natural de facto shaving oil will give you the smoothest, softest shave ever. Switching from shaving oil to de facto helps stop 20 million non-recyclable shaving foam cans go to landfills every year. Switching from shaving oil to de facto will save your skin, your pocket and your planet. DeFactoShave.com All that great business show advertisers are Team GBS approved. Back them. 100 episodes or so ago, I had John O'Connell, boss of Shannon-based CW Applied Technology, on with me. That company provides contract manufacturing and design services to businesses large and small. Now, John was on to me recently to tell me that his company is on the Bordnemona Accelerate Green Accelerator Program. He hopes that what they learn there will in turn help his team to help other startups move more quickly into the green tech space. And to do that, he's building a team of marketing specialists, business development experts, financial advisors, manufacturing personnel and product design engineers to give the best tech ideas a real chance. And to do that, he's funding, which is why he's driven a long, long way from Claire to here to join us again on that great business show. 
John O'Connell, welcome to That Great Business Show. Thank you very much, Connell. Great to be here. Well, thank you so much for driving all the way. Two and a half hours on the motorway, you tell me, and you were listening to podcasts, but it wasn't my one. No, it's, it's always your one, <laughs> No, no, you told me that you listen to sports podcasts and I don't uh, do sports. Priorities. <laughs> we did have Jamie Heaslip, as you know, for a while and That's I've right. done quite a number of other. Do you know who was on with me? It was Paul Galvin, who oh, you yes. know. Yes. He, if anybody's listening, and if they want to hear somebody with a completely different point of view in business, the Paul Galvin one that you'll find on Spotify or whatever, well worth Listen, he says he doesn't design clothes. He's an he uses some terminology like he's a, a wordsmith of clothing or something like that. Right. And when you listen to him, it's not bull. He you can actually begin to see what he's talking about. Lovely, lovely yeah, guy. Yeah. So intelligent and so interesting. Sorry about that, John. No, no Back problem. to you. <laughs> what are you up to? What is this board Nimona accelerator you're on? As you probably know, there's a lot of accelerators now uh, for startups, but this one is focused entirely on green technology, green products. But you've got a products. proper company. Why did you choose to go on to an accelerator? Well, we have a proper company and we're in business eight years, so we're not your classic startup by That's any stretch exactly of the imagination. That's exactly my point. But we want to grow the business, but we want to grow in a particular direction as well. When I started CW Applied Technology, startup companies, new ideas, supporting those was really the initiative that I had or what drove me. Uh, we've been able to do little enough in that area since. Uh, we're trying to balance doing contract manufacturing for people who can actually pay us to do that, that as opposed to mm. does, as opposed to startups who typically can't. Now, you know, even recently I'm talking to angel investors who say, yeah, we get lots of ideas coming to us, people with great ideas, and we tell them, come back to us when you have a minimum of a viable product. And he says, we'll send them to you, which is fine, except they can't pay me to do it. Uh, so, so you better explain to people what the, the real day-to-day -day business one is yes. because we might even get you some business yes, to get correct. you to the next stage if you follow me. Absolutely. So what are you doing? I love what you do. Right. Our core product is manufacturing services. So you have a product, you've developed it, you bring it to us, we'll manufacture it for you in the electronics area. So it can be electronic assemblies or finished products. And small you do as well, because oh, I yes. remember that from previous yes, chats with you. Yeah. So what's a small, what's a would, really we, small run for you? Would be five pieces. Wow. And we would do that, but we would also do 5,000 pieces a week. But why would and anybody want just five pieces? Is that just like a prototype? It, it is a prototype run. And, you know, hardware presents a lot of different problems than software does. Like if you're developing an app or a software, you don't come across the kind of real world issues that hardware developers do. So you, you run into whole issues around sourcing, shipping, supply chain problems, um, product approvals, uh, material testing, intellectual property complications. It's a very, very complex path to commercialization. And it can take many iterations of the product before you get to something that is actually satisfactory. Now, we get people in that tell us, Listen, I need you to build five pieces, but this time next year, I'll be doing 100,000 pieces a month. And we know you won't. Ah, uh, don't <laughs> I'm say sorry. that. I always but, believe that they will. But there's a reason, like what we're trying to do is start a revolution, right? So you don't need to throw me out. It's not a political revolution, <laughs> but it's a revolution for how we deal with the most compelling ideas in product development. And right now we have a, a myriad of accelerators, but there's a gap between the, when you're coming off an accelerator and actually getting your product or service into the market. And we're trying to focus in on that area and you know, hyper-resource it, if you like. And that is what you told me, is that you were building or hoping to build a platform. And when I saw that, I kind of, my, my heart did drop a little bit yes. because a platform doesn't really mean very much. Yeah. I think what, I'm, what, I, what I understand better from you, you're building a team of experts to help others. Would that be a better way of that's, putting it? That's correct, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's very difficult to find the actual word because incubator, accelerator, they're kind of already, there's a lot of stories they're, attached to those. And they're people spoken understand. for. They are, yeah. I suppose what, what we're, what I'm thinking now really describes is more as an entrepreneurial factory. We want people to be able to come build a product, the physical product that they have in their head and get, and put, get it out into the market. And like we deal with a lot of startups, some of which have funding, but their greatest difficulty is they're experts in one particular area, which is around the idea but they're not experts in marketing or market research, market development, finance, a whole range of areas that they suddenly have to dabble in. And you want to bring those people together? As a, as a team around this inventor. Now, sometimes it's not around the inventor, I have to say as well, because some of the people that come to us with great ideas, the idea is great, 
but you know the person is not the person that's going to lead this. How do you gently tell them that? Well, sometimes they know that themselves, so it's not, it's easy. And when they don't know that themselves, because I know who the kind of people you're talking about, I meet them regularly. Right, yeah. And, and it's not unusual either, if you think about it, in that people that come up with great ideas are creatives. And creatives are not normally business leaders. I thought for a second you were going to say they're not normal. (laughs) Well, (laughs) no, no, that that wouldn't be fair. But uh, so how do we, how do we, uh, we have a conversation, let's say, and we try to draw out exactly where they see themselves going with the idea. And your business, based on the post accelerator, how are you going to make your money? Because you are also, you're here to... Uh, ask we, for funds. Yes, we need to find investment. So therefore, when you're looking for funds, you have to have your uh, your deck, Your yes. uh, you have to have your Absolutely. pitch deck. And somewhere on that pitch deck, you have to tell people how you're going to make your money and how much money you are going to make. So do, yeah, do whisper explain. in my ear <laughs> right. how you're going to do all of the above. What the idea is that we will, these compelling ideas that we select as being ones that we believe can make it true to market then we effectively invest in these by bringing in investors. But we're investing in the what you refer to as the platform or the entrepreneurial factory. The money is returned when that idea spins out and is invested in by other people. And so in get, some fashion... We take a shareholding ah, in that. Okay, so, yes. okay, yeah. Now, you are based in Shannon. How are things in Shannon these days? Because once upon a time, I kind of, for reasons historic, I was talking to people about uh, T.K. Whittaker, Sean Lamass, and at that stage, Shannon was spectacularly interesting and brilliant. It was a brilliant idea. Since then, it's lost its luminescence. It it has to an extent, but it is actually growing again. Great. And and, um, the industrial estate, what was the free zone is, you know, there's a lot of new buildings. You see Rishi Sunak is going with the free zone idea in Britain. And (laughs) he's only, what is it? That would have been back in the 60s that you had a free zone? That's right. That's right. And it faded out. It's only 50 years ago. Yes. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) So Mr. Sunak, you're 50 years behind. Yes. So back to Shannon, how is it faring? You're saying getting back, what is giving it its oomph again? We we have a lot of new companies have come in there now, such as Jaguar Land Rover, for instance, and we're involved to an extent in automotive. Did you see that there's an Irish woman has just been elevated in Jaguar Rover? Uh, Her name is, first name is Ruth Nia, I think. And I just by chance, I saw it and I linked in with her. And so therefore... There may be further interest in Ireland uh, as she climbs the ladder oh, right, there. Okay. There you okay, go. Yeah, I hadn't heard that. There you go. Well, you, you hear here first. So I keep interrupting. I kind of get excited by things and I interrupt. Yes. Back to oh, Shannon. So why, things are going okay in Shannon. They are. So they where are. are you getting on in your business, which is CW Applied Technology, where are you getting your business from? It's primarily Ireland for our contract manufacturing business. We have some uh, in the US and we're keen to get more in the EU. And how do you go about trying to find that? Where is your? Where do you advertise? Where do you shake the box or whatever? Uh, again, being a small company, we don't have a lot of resources, so we have to do a lot of the marketing ourselves. But I heard your episode on on ChatGPT, and we are using that already Great. around marketing. And LinkedIn is probably the the one that we use mostly. Okay. Um, and who to, sits? Do, does John O'Connell sit on LinkedIn as I do all day, every day, linking, talking, chatting, writing? I wouldn't say all day, every day, but I do spend a lot of time. It takes a lot of time, doesn't it? It does, yeah. 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 So you obviously have a vision for maybe reinventing CW uh, technology. I do. It's really, it's reinventing how we deal with startups. You know, I think I have absolutely zero criticisms of Enterprise Ireland. To be fair, I think they've done a fantastic job. If we compare the ecosystem today to what it was 20 years ago, it's, it's night and day. You know, they've done fantastic. And it's not really their bag necessarily to, to go from end of the New Frontiers program, for example, to getting people into uh, getting their product into market. Like what I'm talking about there is not more mentoring or presentations or training. It's actual focused work side by side with the idea creator, the inventor. And you obviously see gaps there because that's what you're trying to solve. What are the big gaps that you actually see? What do you, you know, there's a naivety, I'm sure, frequently. Is there a common thread in that naivety? There is, I suppose. You know, everyone or most people are enthused by the idea of having their own business. Uh, it's a lot more difficult than, <laughs> than the idea. But. We might mention that once or twice, yes. Yeah, yeah. But and we would always say, go for it anyway. Go for it anyway. But like as well, I suppose we'd come a lot of, across a lot of people that are working in multinationals. 
and they've got this idea. Some of them very good ideas, or they would appear to us to be very good ideas for products, but they can't really afford to leave the job that they're in because they've mortgage just to pay in car loans or whatever else. And part of what we're thinking is that we those people take a back seat to their idea. They still retain a share in it, but we bring in somebody that who is enthused by the idea and can lead the company. Oh, now I and get we, it. That's a nice idea. Them. So I have a great idea for the next uh, great mousetrap or whatever. Yeah. I can go down and talk to John O'Connell and kind of hand it over to you. Yes, yeah, if we agree to take it on, of course. Of course. <laughs> but yes, yeah. I and love that idea. An agreement. Is yeah. anybody else doing that? No, there isn't. And when I say yep. anybody, is that just yep. in Ireland? Not or have in you Ireland. Seen, have is, you seen a similar model yeah, in the UK? I, I've seen a similar model in the US. There's a company called Idea Lab, and they have been operating for about 27 years now. It's, it's slightly different than what I'm talking about, but in broad context, it's the same in that they're taking ideas and bringing them to market with an expert team around the idea. And has Ideal Lab made a living out of this? Yes, very much so, and has launched quite a number of successful companies. Are they a zillion billion company, or do you know anything at all about I, their finances? I, I know that the founder of it was um, a self-made millionaire, so he was able to invest. I'm not in the same boat, so... But there are fellows down that direction, Limerick direction, and you know who I'm talking about, mm. who might be very, 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 very wealthy, who would be ideal fodder Absolutely. for you. They could, they, would, yeah. they could afford to lose more than a shilling on this. But what kind of people would you like to fund you? And where It's a constant problem because you're, you're going to fall between a load of stools and wealthy people might not be really wealthy enough. Do you need a fund to back you? Basically, what we're thinking is that we need about 2 million euros to get oh, us off okay. the ground. Yeah. And then it depends then on how we can spin out after that how many companies we can spin out. But one of the things that you can't tell anybody is when will the next mousetrap actually be ready no. for market? No, we can't. Tell so you're so kind much. of like a dragon's den? To an extent, yes. But what we're trying to do is speed up that journey from A to B so that we find out how quickly we can get to B and is B a valid place to be. Based on your survived. years and years of experience. Yes, but, but having all of those experts around them that can do the market search and say, yes, there's a gap in the market, but is there a market in the gap? It's that type of, you know, and work with the people and do the research and work as part of a team. Have not you just tell them how they should do it, do it for them. And I don't know the answer to this. Have you spoken with Enterprise Ireland? Because it makes sense that they would take somebody like you on by you. I mean, your company on to try to develop that. Yeah, I, I haven't spoken to them yet. And, you know, I suppose there's a, the initial reason for that, if you like, is that if, if we were in the US now, it would be private investment we're talking about. And at the moment, Enterprise Ireland put a lot of money into development of ideas and somebody else benefits down the road. Now, hopefully the inventor benefits primarily, but other investors put in money and get a return. Enterprise Ireland don't always get it. And that's part of what the state service is. So I'm looking at can we grow this independent of maybe Enterprise Ireland? I, I'm not objecting to taking money from Enterprise Ireland if, they're in, if they like the idea, but I'd like to see private investment coming in as well. Or Port Namona itself is trying to reinvent itself. It's no longer it cutting bogs. Done, yeah. So it's, uh, they could actually... They could. They oh. could, yeah. yeah. No, we would be keen are we, on are that. We on, are we onto something here? Well, we would be keen on that if they were interested in that. Uh, but you had the, have you had the chat? Well, it's ongoing, let's say. There is a chat. This is all great. I'm finding out new things here. Well, you know, I suppose neither of us have laid all our cards on the table at this point. But, you, but this is this, this uh, is helpful. This, well, this podcast is going to go out now. So I don't know it is, yeah. Or maybe yeah. it's not going to be helpful. This might... Well, possibly. But at either rate, we want to, to make this happen. Certainly, Board of Mona have, as you said, gone through a massive transformation. I mean, it's... Having been on this accelerator program now, it's stunning to see the journey they've travelled. I think most people are unaware of just how far they've come. Well, they're they've doing done. an awful lot of advertising at the moment. Yes. I'd love to have their ads just if they're listening. Um, how much have you learned? I mean, you're meant to be yes. the knowledge on this, but you tell me that you've learned on this accelerator yourself. I, I've learned a huge amount, yes. Such as? Yeah. Well, I've told other people this as well. One of the kind of Real uh, eye-opening moments, if you like. I, I, one issue I've always had around this uh, contract manufacturing is how do we sell? And that I'm not a salesman. You know, that's been, you know, we were. it was made very clear through one of our um, presenters on the Accelerator program that usually the owner of the company is the best sales because they're most passionate about what they do. But what I learned was that marketing is actually far more important than the sales function because marketing creates the list of people that you go and talk to. 
And I, w- I would have always considered marketing as nice to have, but I really can't afford it as a small Marketing company. is essential. Yes. Well, so I didn't realise that. Of That's, our podcast business is based on marketing. Right. Endless, yeah. nightless, dayless, every, I mean, every waking moment. Yeah. Market, market, because as you say, it prepares for the sale, doesn't it? It does. You know, ideally it ends up with the marketing person giving a list of contacts to me that I can go and call and speak with or go and visit uh, instead of, you know, trying to drum up that myself. So. so paint me the picture finally of who or what you would like to fund you. And you better give out your email address as well, because somebody might just come on and say, he sounds interesting, nice idea. So who or what are you looking for and where will they find you? Well, we're looking for about two, approximately €2 million euro investment a week. In How long will that keep you going? Uh, well, that gets us up and running in terms of the resources and the people that we can bring in and new ideas coming in. In terms of the investment that would be required into new ideas, that's more of a depends on the idea and depends on the size of the product. So further funding after that might be needed. But then, yeah, I can understand that idea. Yeah. yeah. And are you looking for, uh, I know we've discussed this, but individual or like everybody's money is good. Or would you prefer a company or would you prefer a fund? Like Elkstone, for example, have been on the show with me and now they're further along the path than you with somebody like that? Yes, I mean, we're open to that. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I haven't got a list of, oh, I'm going to call these people. I mean, from my contact with Board of Mona, I think they are, you know, given where they're going and where they've come from, um, they're kind of ideally positioned, but that's in my head. It mightn't be in theirs. But uh, individuals that have the resources that, you know, understand the idea or at least want to come and talk about the idea, and then, you know, we would love to have those conversations. And the perfect segue to the final question, which you know already, is who would you hire in a heartbeat? Well, I'll go back to the company I mentioned to you in, the L- in LA, uh, Idea Lab, and the owner of that company is a guy called Bill Gross. Now, Bill has gone down a lot of the road that I'm talking about going down. Not exactly the same, but I think he could provide a lot of guidance and support. And have you ever met with or have you been in contact no, I have with? Tra- I have reached out to him. I haven't got a response yet. On LinkedIn or what did you on use? On LinkedIn, yes. Bill, shame on you is because <laughs> we're going to chase you now and we'll see whether we can make that link for you. And he, you say he's over in LA. Yes. Well, we'll see whether we know anybody in LA who knows Bill Gross. Big place, I know, but you never know. Yes, There's always yeah. somebody who knows somebody. Oh, without a doubt. So, John O'Connell, thank you so much for joining us on That Great Business Show. Thanks, Connell. Dundeal Motors is home to Ireland's largest range of new and premium used cars. That's why you'll find cars from Audi and BMW dealerships on Dundeal. Are you looking for a seven-seater to accommodate your growing family? Maybe you're after a luxury saloon to make a statement. We have the car for you. You'll also find Ireland's largest range of electric cars to help you make the switch. Visit dundeal.ie today to start the search for your next car. De facto shaving oil, the world's best shaving oil. Made in Mayo, sold worldwide. It's all go, let Corsi Gno on that great business show.com. That great business show. And that's it from that great business show, episode 139. 45 minutes of business insights and inspiration. Thanks to our sponsor, Dundeal.ie, the only place to find your next car new or second hand. Sign up to our email updates on our website, thatgreatbusinessshow.com and we'll send you our latest news as well as your own personal copy of the podcast that you can then send on to all of your pals showing them that you are really in touch with what is important in business. And of course, if you would like to advertise with us, contact us on LinkedIn or via that website. We recorded the Dublin South Podcast Studios where Lee accelerate out the door. Brennan is today's sound engineer. Later, Neil Vavavavoom Horner will ensure a fast delivery of the podcast to your favourite podcast platform. So, from me, Conal Moran, buichas to you all. Agslan Tunnel.